Hello, Legend of the Samurai here with a rather uncommon lock. Uh, this is the Asa Twin Exclusive, but not the normal one. Uh, the normal one is the Twin 6800, successor to the Twin 6000 series, and this one is the Baltic version, uh, the Twin 5700. It uses a totally different sidebar, and so no one knows why they named them the same thing, but this one is considerably harder to find, and it picks a little bit differently. All right, so it has barrels and matched countermilling up top, and then the sidebar uh, acts sort of like a V10, but not quite. So I will be tensioning counterclockwise. Uh, that tends to make picking the side pins in a twin much easier, so unless you're forced to do otherwise, it's a good idea to pick twins counterclockwise. And as with these newer locks, uh, as I start out here, the barrels are going to act tapered until they get up into the milling. So I'll just start bouncing off one, two, and three, tapping them, and just walking everything up. When I run out of feedback there, I'll tap four, and then see if I can get things to set. All right, so I think that's all of my barrels set. I'll switch over to a little side pin pick and see if I can't get these set. So I go back to four and five. to two, which has started binding. A couple of clicks there. I do have a zero lift right in the middle, and I think I've overset it. So I drop all those back. Okay, there we go. Open. So picked counterclockwise, uh, the sidebar is not too much different from a V10. Uh, you can move things up through false gates without uh, having to float back off of them. If you try to pick it in the other direction, uh, the sidebar in this one actually grabs very, very strongly. So I'll get this apart, and that will actually come out the top because this is put together with one of these closing rods. So that unscrews. We can get our springs out.
All right, and then take the back off. Some Torx screws. Is our sidebar. And we will come back to this in more detail in just a moment because it is a very interesting sidebar. Make sure we don't lose our tiny sidebar springs. And then take our side pins out. Okay, so first we have our plug. Uh, it has the normal ASA barrel counter milling. It's two shallow sharp cuts in every chamber on both sides, and the uh, barrel drivers will hook into that fairly nicely. And we have a sidebar cutout, pretty standard and space for our side pins. Here is our keyway, so that is one of the first differences uh, to the other exclusive. This has that uh, undercut 851 keyway, whereas this is totally different. Uh, not very restrictive at all. Uh, this is a southward short hook in 25 thousandths, and that has no issue in there. Uh, but it is a bit narrower uh, at the bottom compared to this other one, so while I have uh, a decent amount of room to work with this pick, I can go side to side a bit. In this one, it just barely fits, and so I only have the ability to rotate it. So that is our plug. Uh, our housing is pretty normal. We have our sidebar groove, we have chambers, and that closing rod up at the top, uh, which is really quite a convenient way. Uh, to set these up. It makes them very easy to take apart. And then here we have our pins. So we have barrel drivers over standard key pins, and then we have our side pins. So yeah, these are normal ASA key pins. Of varying lengths, normal barrel drivers of varying lengths, and on these uh, very low cut ones they have these tiny little barrel spools. Uh, but even so, these actually sit low enough that you get to use both of those cuts uh, in the counter milling for the barrels, even on those really low cuts on the key. So that was thought out in advance. Now we have these side pins. So the front, which interacts with the key, uh, has one of these little triangular projections going to the keyway. And then the back is where the interesting stuff is. So we have a nice wide true gate and then a bunch of little false gate serrations. And then we come to the sidebar. Oh, and uh, because of the coating that is in the sidebar, all of these are identical. Uh, so they all have the same true gate and the same false gates all the way across. Now the sidebar is where things diverge from the rest of the twins. So this has 
two fences, essentially, with a groove in between them. And that differs from a normal twin sidebar, which only has the one. And while these have uh, five bidding heights, because these are wider, they can only fit four bidding heights. But what happens is instead of the normal sidebar, uh, where the fence gets stuck in the middle of one of these grooves, this one actually gets stuck, it's a little hard to see, uh, up on the ridges in between. make that focus. So this one actually sits on the ridges, and as it bumps back and forth, it's in between uh, those false gate serrations. And then when you get to the true gate, you fall in and you have a little bit of wiggle room. So this is the only uh, twin cylinder that uses this sidebar. Uh, nobody's really sure why, because all of the other twins, apart from uh, the combis that use the rotating finger pins, uh, use these sidebars, and these are interchangeable across all of the locks, whereas none of them could be interchanged uh, into this system, and they couldn't be swapped out either. But there we are. That is the ASA Baltic Twin Exclusive. There's our bidding. Uh, a fun pick, a very, very hard lock to find, but it picks uh, pretty much like an exclusive with an easier keyway if you're going counterclockwise. Uh, if you're going clockwise, the extra torque uh, that you get from trying to rotate a side pin pick up under these pins adds to your tension, and so uh, it gets much trickier to sneak those past the false gates, and you end up having to uh, almost float those out. But if you have the option, pick twins counterclockwise, because it is the simpler direction. All right, go close on these one more time. There we are. That is the ASA Twin Exclusive 5700. and gutted. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.